Hello, it's Scott Manley here and today I want to talk about small rockets. Why? Well, because people have been asking. And the reason people have been asking is there's a few commercial organizations looking at using smaller rockets to launch things to orbit. You see, large rockets are great, but if you want to launch a very small payload, it becomes not very cost effective and you have to kind of share your launch with somebody else. That's great, can be cost effective, but uh, sometimes you end up getting the short end of the stick. For example, in the case of CRS-1, the first payload that uh, SpaceX launched towards the space station, a problem during launch meant that the secondary payload had to be left in a lower orbit than was uh, intended, and therefore it was lost after a couple of days. So there are people that want to build smaller launch ro rockets so that you don't have to share. So Rocket Labs have been aiming for a niche in this market and they have the Electron rocket. This is a 10.5 ton rocket that uh, is able to put a 150 to 250 kilogram payload into low Earth orbit. It uses kerosene liquid oxygen as its fuel system. Its Rutherford engines are really interesting because they are... Their turbo pumps are powered by electric motors and lithium ion batteries rather than a more conventional turbine system which might use fuel. Um, they use, have two stages. The construction is mostly carbon fiber, which means that the rocket is all black, appropriate given that it launches from New Zealand. So they had one launch so far. It didn't make orbit, but the first and second stage did actually work. So it's expected that there may be a second launch later in the year and that would be good for Moon Express who have been relying on the Electron rocket to lift their Moon uh, Google Moon Express payload. That, that would be an interesting thing. This would also make it the smallest rocket capable of putting a payload on the surface of the Moon if this whole chain works out. But yeah, that's a small rocket. However, it isn't the smallest rocket that's ever put a payload in orbit by any means. For example, you may remember the Vanguard rocket that was developed by the US Navy as part of the, um, part of the US geophysical year. That was their spacecraft, uh, so their launcher that was supposed to be able to uh, compete with Sputnik. Obviously, they didn't compete with Sputnik. In fact, they had many highly publicized failures and Von Braun's team eventually launched Explorer 1 before Vanguard put its satellite in space. Vanguard was only 10 tons and 50 kilograms, just the hair smaller than the electrons. Compare that to the Sputnik, of course, which was 270 tons. Its payload was absolutely tiny, something like a couple of kilos. Uh, but interestingly enough, that Vanguard satellite is still in space after all this time. It is the longest living uh, space satellite, artificial satellite. The Vanguard rocket had a first stage which used uh, kerosene liquid oxygen. Second stage was hypergolic, powered by an early version of the AJ-10 engine. Now the AJ-10 is still in use today. It was adapted for use in the Apollo uh, program and it was adapted for use in the space shuttle and now it's going to be used in the space launch system. However, Vanguard still wasn't the smallest orbit capable launcher. That title is held by the Lambda 4S, a Japanese rocket which is a five-stage solid rocket system. Interestingly enough, for various, uh, well, they were worried about missile technology, so they explicitly designed their rocket to use technology that couldn't be used for guiding missiles. They actually launched it off the launch pad at an angle and let the gravity turn kind of carry it over towards its orbit. But yeah, that rocket was 9,400 kilograms. And in January or February of 1970, it launched the Osumi 5 satellite into low Earth orbit. That uh, satellite was 26 kilograms, so it was actually better than Vanguard in that regard. And uh, yeah, that satellite is still in orbit at this time. But earlier this year, Japan went even further than that. They tried to launch a three kilogram CubeSat into orbit using a 2,600 kilogram SS-520 sounding rocket. Now the SS-520 is a two-stage sounding rocket that can put uh, test payloads of 150 kilograms or so 
into a you know 1,000 kilometer suborbital trajectory. If you replace most of that 150 kilo payload with a third stage, bingo, you have a chance of getting something into orbit. However, they lost contact with their spacecraft about 20 seconds into their launch, and after a few minutes, they signaled the uh, launch abort signal. So it didn't work, but there's a chance that they might make it work at some point in the future. But in the meantime, there is Vector Space Systems. They're a US company and their plans involve a 5,000 kilogram rocket which could launch a 50 kilo payload into low Earth orbit. Now, um, they've tested a small subscale version of their rocket. It's interesting that the fuel that they're planning to use is liquid oxygen and propylene. I've not really seen this used elsewhere, but right now they're still only at the prototype stage and it's entirely possible that when their five ton rocket launches, it's not setting any records for smallest rocket at any point. However, all these designs may in fact have been beaten by a long forgotten project from the 1950s. In 1958, Project Pilot was run out of the Naval Ordnance Test Station. Uh, it was also known as Notznik. It was an air-launched rocket which used five stages and was supposedly capable of putting a tiny payload into low Earth orbit. It was 900 kilograms, assuming you forgot the F4 Sky Ray that was, able to, was used to launch it. Now, almost all of these launches were failures, some more spectacular than others. But one particular failure may actually have succeeded. On August 22nd, contact was lost with the launch vehicle during the second stage burn, and it was declared a failure, but cameras recording it showed the vehicle continuing and traveling over the horizon. The listening station in Christchurch apparently received possible signals during the correct times for the first and third orbit, but that was it. Did the thing actually succeed in getting to orbit and then fail there only to fall back? Or was the, was the listening station just confused? We don't really know, but it was a 900 kilogram launcher. Now later they actually worked on a phase two of Project Pilot called Project Caleb, which used a slightly bigger rocket and was more likely to get something into orbit. But that was uh, stopped before they got as far as testing with a, uh, an orbital launch vehicle. Now another interesting note is that all these rockets I've described, I've described the smallest launcher in terms of mass, but if you talk about the shortest launcher to ever get something to orbit, that would actually be the British Black Arrow, which launched the Prospero satellite into low Earth orbit and was only 13 meters tall. It was short and stubby, it looked like a bullet from a very, very big gun. That marked a great success for the British space program. They became part of a very exclusive club of countries that were able to launch their own satellites using their own launch hardware. This success was somewhat marred by um, the fact that the project had been canceled just before that launch because Britain had decided it was cheaper to use American launchers. So it is rather unfortunate that Britain is the only nation to have been able to do this and then walk away from the said capability. But for now, I'm looking forward to Rocket Labs and their Electron, and maybe to Vector Space Systems. It'll be nice to see these small rockets launching and showing that you don't need to have a giant rocket to get something into space. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.